Oh, hello, Greg Tech Gear Junkie here. You may know me from such YouTube videos as QRP, is 10,000 watts too much? Or QRP, crazy for compasses. But seriously, today I want to cover a topic that's close to my heart and I've been wanting to discuss for quite a while. It is CW, why bother? So join me, Greg Tech Gear Junkie, as we discuss this topic and more in our next edition of whatever this channel's called, Roll Credits. I'm glad you indulged me on my, my intro there. Feeling a little bit silly today, but... Gosh, it's been like, I don't know, a month since I put a video out, and it wasn't for lack of trying. I've been out on several different occasions and took my video camera along and my equipment and set up, and just no luck. The bands just didn't didn't uh, didn't pan out for those two things. So rather than put up some videos of me calling CQ and struggling to get a contact, I figured I'd just chill out a bit. But anyhow... Uh, while we wait, while we wait for things to get back to normal and for our parks to open up so we can get back out, I'm sure you guys are probably in the same boat as me, figured I'd t tackle a philosophical discussion here, right? <laughs> you guys have seen me use it before, thinking about CW, Morse code, with ham radio, and my title of the video is maybe a bit facetious, but I'm saying, why bother? Why would we bother messing around with CW in this modern age? It's, I mean, it's a pain. It's a pain to learn. It takes so much time, especially if you do it like me without going to a class and just trying to learn it on your own. And it, the options out there for, for us modern hams are, is we have RTTY, right? Which is developed in the in the 1920s, Riddy, some people call it. I don't think I've ever had a Riddy QSO, but I know it's an option. We have a PSK31. Does anybody still use PSK31 anymore? It's still out there. It's a great way for keyboard to keyboard communication. And then we've got FT8. You know, FT8 super easy. Once you've got all your stuff set up and, uh, and your equipment configured, you don't even need to participate. You can just, uh, Get yourself a beer and have your radio make contacts for you. So why bother with CW? <laughs> why? But really, I mean, I'm being facetious, right? Obviously, we all know that I prefer CW of those modes. And let's, I'm going to go into a little bit of history of it. I'm sure this is probably pretty dry, but it has been in use since 1844 by Samuel Morse. We all know that, Morse Code. He was the guy, he was actually an artist. I didn't realize this as I was researching him on Wikipedia. He's got quite a few paintings out there and somehow he got into the field of electrical study and came up with a circuit for telegraph communication. And he came up with Morse code, kind of almost what we ended up with was not what he envisioned. He envisioned sending a series of numbers and you'd take that number and you'd cross-reference the number that was sent and that would reference a word. So if you sent like 183, that would be like how or something. And so the original Morse code only had the numbers and it didn't have the letters. But he eventually realized that that was kind of cumbersome. I think some others kind of came, came up on that too. It wasn't just him. But uh, we ended up with, with dots and dashes for letters as well as numbers. But it was originally a visual system. I didn't realize this. It was you'd you'd tap your your telegraph key, and rather than try to listen for a sound, it would print it out on paper. And what ended up happening was that the operators would just listen for the clicks of that device tapping on the paper, and they got to the point where you didn't even need the paper because they could just do it in their head and listen to the clicks, the docks, and the dashes, and make a distinctive sound each one, so the paper was no longer necessary. So that's why we ended up with this kind of the tone. 
So there's a whole lot more to that story. You guys can go check it out on Wikipedia or whatever, but <laughs> it's interesting. So, but why bother? Why is we hams? Why should we bother with CW? But, you know, if you're going to take that approach, you know, why do we even bother with ham radio? We have the internet, we have cell phones, but we do it anyway. So why would we pick something as, as difficult to learn as CW? Well, I think it's different for each of us, right? I think it's, at least as far as ham radio goes, we like the social aspect of it. And we like the science. We, we, we got into ham radio, radio for a reason. Each one of us for a different reason, I'm sure. But, you know, there's obviously more efficient ways of communication right now. It's different than it was like in 1916 or whatever, where this is like the only way to, to communicate with somebody across the globe. Now we have all kinds of options. So why, so why do we bother with ham radio? Well, as George Mallory said when he was asked about Everest, why climb Everest? And his answer was, because it's there. <laughs> so we do ham radio because it's there, because it's a challenge. And we can extrapolate that even further to say, why do we do CW? We do CW because it's there. It's a challenge. And when you've mastered it, you get that sense of accomplishment when they get that first QSO. And I think a lot of guys who are watching my videos, I'm not sure, but I think a lot of guys are like me. You're just starting out in uh, portable communications, a QRP. And with QRP, you quickly realize that one of the most efficient ways to get QRP to work is to do CW. So the next step is to say, well, what, how can I learn that? You know, and a lot of us, you know, me included, you go, you start, you go get your license for your tech exam, and that's a challenge, right? And you get your, your tech exam, and you get your, your ham license, and you say, wow, that was cool. I've accomplished something. And then you go to your general, and you study a little bit more for that. That's a bit harder, right? And we get that, and we say, that's a challenge. And then some of us, go all the way to extra and that's a real hard piece of study that's like you know for me it was like a year of studying we say that's a challenge and we've completed it so we've got our extra and what's the next step what's the next challenge well there's there's all kinds of things right we can build kits we can design circuits but for me personally i'm not really a kit circuit kind of guy but cw was the next challenge and i be by no means would say I'm anywhere near super proficient at it, but it was the next step for me as something to try out. So that's why I use it. It's, uh, I look at my log these days and there's not much sideband. The sidebands I do are usually activations and QRP and stuff. But if I'm gonna sit down at my base station, it's gonna be CW just because I enjoy that challenge. And it's rewarding when you get a QSO and, you, and you've struggled through it and you've written down and you've got that signal report and you, you put it in your log. And then you, if you're lucky, you get a QSL card from somebody. There's, there's the reward. That's the reward. What else? What's another reason for, for wanting to learn CW? Well, in terms of deployment, in terms of gear, it's simple. It's just... It's a switch. It's on and off. That's all you need. Especially if you're going to be doing QRP and hiking or, or you're going out remote. You don't want to drag a lot of gear with you. The less stuff you have, the, the less can go wrong. And digital modes are great, but they require an order of magnitude more setup and equipment. If you're at home, it's not a big deal, right? We have, we have our gear set up at home. We have our computers and our interfaces and our sound cards. But if you're out hiking around, you can do it, but it's, it's just an order of magnitude more complicated. And it's like to say, for QRP, that's the, to me, your opinion may vary. <laughs> I think CW is the way to go if you're not doing sideband. Also in an emergency, right? Oh, you know, God forbid we have some kind of situation where maybe you can't get your computer running or to, due to whatever circumstance you're in, you don't, you can't get all that extra equipment hooked up, don't have the time. CW is just immediate. All you need is your key, your radio, and your antenna, and your ear, and that's it. So think about that. It's just super simple. All right, why else? Why would we mess around with, with CW? Well, you know, sideband's obviously easiest. That's where we all start. But it's not super efficient, especially with QRP. 
but CW is super efficient. Maybe not quite as much as like FT8, you know, designed for weak signal. But maybe it is. I mean, there's nothing magic about ST, FT8. It's still just a signal. It's got to get out through the noise. And so, especially with CWs, just a little power goes a long way. If you've got a good antenna, you don't need a lot of power. It's got a very narrow bandwidth. So just a little, a little blip of energy. Your signal can go all the way across the world. Just watch the video I did with the uh, 10 watts to France. You guys can argue whether that's QRP or not, that's fine, but it's still 10 watts. 10 watts to France with CW, with minimal equipment, there was no computers, there was nothing. It was just me and my key and a notepad and, uh, and a tuned antenna. And let's say, let's think about the last reason. Well, there's probably lots of reasons. The last reason I can think of, it's civilized and pure. <laughs> what do I mean by civilized? I know you listen to so much stuff like on 80 meters at night or whatever, and there's there's a lot of arguing, there's a lot of politics, there's sometimes religion in there, and that's stuff I can do without. But with CW, it's just a simple. It's it's you know your contact, your location. It can be a little bit of rag chewing. Nothing wrong with that, but they don't. There's not a lot of anger. I've never heard a, an angry. CWQ so because it just takes too much energy right <laughs> we want to say hi thanks and this is my rig and that's what I appreciate and also it's it's pure there's something pure and romantic about it to me anyway about a CW signal to me that it comes down that's the root of ham radio right you can remember if you guys who have your licenses or maybe the first time you fired up an HF rig and got it tuned in. The first time you heard a, a Morse code signal coming down the line there. It's kind of mysterious, right? It's, it's, it evokes the very spirit of radio, to quote Rush. <laughs> that's, that's it to me. Whenever I hear a Morse code signal coming across the distant airwaves somewhere, to me, that's what it's all about. That's the purest form of communication, so that's why I do it. Anyhow, I'm rambling. I'm kind of blathering on a little bit, but uh, <laughs> put some put your comments down below why you like CW. I'm sure you probably saw the title of this, and we're gonna come in all angry. Ah, Greg doesn't like CW. No, I love it. It's great, and I'm gonna keep working to get better at it. And I hope uh, you guys who are on the fence, where you're watching my videos, and maybe wondering if you wanna you wanna learn it. Absolutely, I recommend you learn it. I don't recommend you learn the way I did just by teaching yourself. That's what well, you can, but it's a lot harder. Find a class, find a CWT class or one of those Zoom classes they have out there. I think that's a better way to go. They teach you head copy, they teach you all the letters. And if you guys are interested in learning how I did it, uh, leave a comment below. I'd be happy to explain my system, which isn't the greatest, but it's worked for me. So, uh, like I say, I'm still not like a 20 words per minute super proficient, but I can, I can hack out a QSO when I need to. So, anyway, I do hope to get back out soon, get some hiking done. I hope everybody's staying safe. I hope you're all dodging germs, and uh, <clears throat> hopefully the parks will start up and up soon. We can get out and do some remote operations. So. Until next time, this is Greg Tech, your junkie, saying 73s, thank you, and we'll see you in the next one.